Captain. Thank you, non orders and thanks, Sanjay and Organizing Committee and Scientific Committee for giving me talk on this very important topic, the clinical insight and real world experience, which I am going to talk in next 15, 20 minutes, where I had used the oral semaglutide and I will show some of the cases. I have a financial disclosure that this has been supported by Novo Nordis. This is a routine garden variety of type two diabetic patients. Just we have written the name here, Varsha, 39 year old. She is having early onset of diabetes and obesity, erratic lifestyle. She struggles to manage her diabetes. HB1C is more than nine. Weight is 74 kg with BMI of 30. Duration of diabetes one year and metformin on maximal daily dose. So this is routinely these type of patients who come to our clinic having the A1C of more than nine. Even they have a recently recent onset of diabetes with A1C of more than nine. Not very re regular as far as A1C is concerned or regular for the managing the diabetes or going to the doctor. She is already on metformin highest dose with 2 gram per day with A1C which has come more than 9. She is not able to register herself whenever she eats and this type of complaint or many times when we ask the person with diabetes, they say that, you know, I can't register myself when I see the food. Even when we have the OAD option, when we want to give these patients, we know that now we have oral semaglutide. So as an oral anti-diabetic agent, most of the physician would like to add these patients either with SGLT2, DPP4, GLP, or they may would like to in combination also. Now let me tell that with these different types of medication which we have, how much A1C they can reduce. So the first very important thing is here, a 39-year-old female, what should be the target A1C? I mean, if we can achieve HbA1c less than 6.5 without hypoglycemia, and these are the three drugs, oral anti-diabetic agents, which will not cause any hypoglycemia, probably you can achieve the HbA1c of less than 6.5. That can be the target for these patients. Now, if I talk about the glycemic control by different oral anti-diabetic agents, the DPP-4 averagely it may reduce the A1c with the average A1c of more than 9 or 9.5 to 1. This is what the average A1C which we can achieve from by adding the DPP-4 after the metformin. With SGLT2, it goes between 0.8 to 1.2. Again, different patients may uh, respond differently, but then you may achieve and the target will not be achieved by adding just one drug. So you want to achieve and try to get the A1C of less than 6, 6.5 or less than 7, probably oral semaglutide with the data of more than 9 A1C baseline, you can reduce with just now, mm -hmm. Ultimates had also shown that data to show that HB1C can be reduced even up to 2.6. And this patient, you, were, you can achieve the HB1C of even 6.4 by adding only one oral anti-diabetic agent, that's what oral semaglutide. This is the oral semaglutide when it is compared with SGLT2, DPP4 and other GLP1. With the monotherapy, the oral semaglutide had shown 1.3 with 7 milligram and 1.5 with uh, when it was compared with placebo. When it was compared with uh, SGLT2, it is 1.3. With other gliptin, it had shown up to 1.1. And even with the injectable GLP1, it found to be better than even injectable liraglutide 2 to reduce the A1C part. The weight reduction, which is very important. We know that SGLT2 inhibitor also reduces significant weight when we are adding this patient with after the metformin. Average weight reduction of almost 5% is around 3.8 kg. The patient can lose the weight by 3.8 kg. With DPP4 also, more or less, it is a weight neutral, but with the metformin and reinforcing the patients on a diet control, we can reduce still the weight around 1 to 2 kg, but semaglutide weight reduction could be around 5 kg, and we have seen that even more than 5 kg weight reduction in your clinical practice, you must have seen the patients who are started with semaglutide. And particularly for those patients who are saying that they can't resist when they see the food, you know, they just can't see, uh, they can't stop themselves to eat the food. And for those patients, it is very, very beneficial when you add GLP-1 uh, because the satiety level increases, uh, the in intake of food is decreased significantly, and they reduce the weight also very, very significantly. The additional reduction in cardiovascular risk factor with oral semaglutide, there's a decrease in high sensitive CRP. 
there is a decrease in lipids there is a decrease in systolic blood pressure and there is a decrease in vest circumference or a abdominal girth that is also very very significant so the patient who has been started with a a1c of more than 9 with a one year of duration of diabetes was on full dose of metformin after starting on a oral semaglutide you can see here the a1c of more than 9 this patient is achieving after 6 months hb1c of more than uh, less than 6.4 B it is 69, which is BMI is decreased by two, almost 28.2, and patient is on 14 milligram full dose of uh, semaglutide along with metformin full dose. So there is a significant reduction in A1C. Lipids also improved. Vest circumference decreased. Systolic blood pressure decreased, and there is a decrease in weight too. Let us see the next case, and this is again. routinely we see these type of patients with multiple cardiovascular risk factor this is a patient with type 2 diabetes with high risk of cardiovascular disease with a1c of 8.5 with bmi of 33 with a duration of diabetes 6 years with a high risk of cardiovascular disease with hypertension dyslipidemia or significant obesity this patient is already on metformin dpp4 tried other oral anti diabetic agents and then put patients on insulin but still the avc is not getting good control of this patient the key issue for this if this patient again because it is in metformin we will have a target of avc for this patients less than 7 preferably that's what we want to have without getting hypoglycemia the glycemic control first and foremost thing the patient is having high blood uh, bmi also and we have to see for other severe risk factor and long term complication in this particular patient with a multiple anti diabetic agents which he is already on now glp1 and sglt2 both are going to help the patient by getting a good control as he is not on sglt2 not on uh, uh, glp1 insulin can also we can increase or intensify the therapy by the basal bolus or intensify the therapy for insulin for getting good control of diabetes but that will further increase the weight too effect on body weight maximum weight reduction you will find with the glp1 sglt2 will also reduce some weight dpp4 as i told you it's weight neutral plus minus and insulin may increase rather cv risk factor reduction will be with glp1 and sglt2 both are going to reduce the pleiotropic benefits more with like weight reduction which is a major benefit with the glp1 and a risk of hypoglycemia with glp1 sglt2 and dpp4 and metformin which patient is already on which will not increase the risk of hypoglycemia but definitely insulin or intensifying insulin therapy by putting the patient on basal bolus will have increase the risk of hypo glycemia too the proportion of patient achieving insu insulin reduction of more than 20% with the initial doses after oral semaglutide and this we had seen many times when patients are on insulin when we add the patients on glp1 we had seen the significant reduction in the insulin dose particularly when they are on prandial or premix insulin we reduce also when we start the patients on a glp1 and we see it's not just 20% even sometimes we see more than that that's what we had initiated the patients on a glp1 we find there is a reduction we reduce the patients insulin dose by 20% and then depending on their sugar control we reduce the dose of insulin too and simultaneously we monitor these patient and as we escalate the therapy from 4 to 7 7 to 14 then you may reduce further dose of insulin too this is the pioneer 6 data where the primary endpoint cardiovascular and all cause mortality had shown with the patients who are on semaglutide there is a consistent cv safety with 21% mass reduction for non infertility and consistent cv safety with 49% all cause mortality and 51% cv death reduction for non infertility by using the oral semaglutide and this person is having already multiple cardiovascular risk factor glp1 also reduce the risk of ascvd where we had shown already i had talked about the glp1 and sglt2 both are going to reduce the risk of ascvd which is not the benefit as far as dpp4 is concerned that benefit is not there with an meta analysis of glp1 cardiovascular outcome trial showed a significant risk reduction for a stroke and myocardial infarction too the glycemic control for mohan what we have done with the adding the i mean changing from dpp4 we would like to add either sglt2 oral semaglutide or both depending on whether you want both the molecules to be added this patients or dpp4 definitely you have to uh, stop when we are adding the glp1 so this patient could be on 
reducing the dose of insulin and can be continued with metformin, SGLT2 and uh, oral semaglutide or if you want to add only changing the DPP4 to oral semaglutide, whatever which you want to do. The weight reduction, again, as the patient is already on multiple oral antidiabetic agents, still SGLT2 is going to give the benefit, but the semaglutide is going to have more benefit as far as weight reduction is concerned. Let me talk, and this is not the same patient, but one of the patients who had come to us with a HbA1c of more than 8.5. Patient was already on triple oral anti-diabetic agents along with insulin. You can see here uh, with the continuous glucose monitoring, the fasting and post-meal all glucose level are high. So the first three or four days, you can see the all post-meal glucose level are high and the even fasting sugar is somewhere around more than 150 or 160. Even you, had, you can see on first and second day, it was almost touching 180 degree. What we have done, we had changed the patient from gliptin to the oral semaglutide. From the insulin dose, we had just decreased the dose of the insulin also. And patient was asked to... even the 20% reduction in the basal insulin dose is still the fasting is controlling and you can see the last four days uh, hardly any peak of post meal glucose level with the patients who is put on SGLT2 along with uh, oral semaglutide which only started with 3 milligram and metformin full dose and you can see in 14 days almost more than 70% of the time the patient sugar was in the range so you know by putting the patients on a continuous glucose monitoring, the biggest advantage is that patient, when he himself sees the report of it, it convinces the patient that, you know, the even small amount of the food which he was taking in a breakfast, how much it can increase the sugar level. And that's very important because most of the patients, they are not agree that a small amount of poya or ukma can increase their sugar level to 250. When you do that... Uh, continuous glucose monitoring or ambulatory glucose profile, you can see even a small amount of that calf which they are taking at a breakfast level that can increase their sugar level even up to 250 and it will also convince them for a taking low carbs for their lunch and dinner and how oral semaglutide or GLP-1 can uh, decrease their uh, appetite and that can help their getting the sugar level control and even by decreasing the injectable insulin which is the basal insulin by 20 30 percent you can see from first uh, graph it is decreased from 160 milligram to 110 milligram not by increasing by decreasing the injectable basal insulin and that's the beauty of using oral or glp1 analog in the patients of type 2 diabetes particularly in india so the additional reduction in cardiovascular risk factor which i already talked in a previous slide that it decreases high sensitive crp decrease in lipids decrease in systolic blood pressure and this 51 year old mr mohan was already having multiple cardiovascular risk factor and we had to use the molecule which is going to decrease the other cardiovascular risk factor as we have done for this patient we know that American Diabetic Association 2022 standard of care had talked about the patients who have established cardiovascular disease after the metformin if the sugar is not controlled the choice of therapy for them is GLP-1 or either SGLT-2 or in combination uh, with the patients if A1C is above target for patients on GLP-1 consider incorporating SGLT-2 or those who are on SGLT-2 you can put the patient on uh, uh, SGLT2. So this is what uh, the ADA 2022 is talking about and we also all uh, follow the similar guideline. In 2022, ADA is not just about the A1C, it's not just only the glucocentric approach we have. We definitely would like to achieve the glucose control too, but that's not only the approach we want to have. We also want to use the molecule to reduce the complication and that's why we would like to use the molecule like GLP-1 and the advantage of using the oral semaglutide because 
Many Indian patients are very fussy to use the injectable. They are not ready to accept that injectable after the metformin or after immediately after putting them on a one or two aerial anti-diabetic agents. They are not ready to accept injectable and that's an advantage of this oral anti-diabetic agent which is oral semaglutide. The advantage of GLP-1 giving them in an oral pill. GLP-1 have a multifactorial effect beyond glycemic control. Same slide which has already been used two times so I just not want to... Uh, again uh, talk about it but it has got effect on a pancreas and creatine system adipose tissue on kidney on brain already dr km prasanna kumar was talking about there are trial which is going on with alzheimer disease and on the liver for nash and nephil 2 to summarize there is a significant reduction of a1c weight there is a pools uh, semaglutide data had shown a significant reduction of 32 percent risk of stroke glp1 have a multifactorial effect beyond glycemic control and that is what a ideal oral anti-diabetic agent should be because it has got a reduction in a1c no hypoglycemia fasting ppbs both getting decrease decrease in weight gain decrease in weight CV benefits, tolerable side profile, uh, tolerable side effect profile, and approved for wide variety of patients. With this, I thank once again thank you, no notice and organizing committee and scientific committee for giving me an opportunity. Thank you, thank you very much.